Howdy folks, I think we got a fun one for you today. Going to be playing with some high voltage and testing out and reviewing a tool that I've been wanting for a long time and that is a high voltage test probe that works with digital multimeters. So if you've been curious about these things, if you've been thinking of getting one, uh, or if you just want to understand how they work, stick around and we're going to go over it and hopefully we won't burn the joint down or light ourselves on fire. I want to thank Banggood for sending this to me so we can all have a look at it together. And as usual, I'll have product links down in the description if you want to check it out a little bit closer. This specific one is made by Pintech. It's their model number HVP40. The voltage range, it'll measure up to 40 kilovolts DC or 20 kilovolts AC. In AC, it says it does from 50 to 60 hertz. So basically line type voltage frequencies and the attenuation ratio, all high voltage probes like this are very similar. This one's one to 1000, meaning that for every 1000 volts that you probe with the high voltage probe, your digital multimeter will read one volt. So if you were to probe 8,000 volts, the meter would read eight volts. And these are meant to be used in conjunction with a DMM. It's very important that the internal uh, resistance or impedance of your digital multimeter is the correct value for the probe. If you don't have a multimeter that's the correct value, uh, there's no point getting the probe and we're going to go over that and actually check it on this meter to make sure so yeah you'd want to check your meter either physically or just looking at the specs before you would order one of these things now i've been looking for a high voltage probe for a number of years and if you have to ask yourself why you want one you probably don't need one right i've seems every year i'm coming across more and more things uh, around the house that I've been wanting to check our electronic air cleaner and our furnace crapped out here in this past year wanted to check that didn't have the equipment to do it a microwave transformer went out again couldn't check it because I didn't have the equipment to do it HID ballast in the car went out couldn't check it so you know this is goes beyond just uh, cathode ray tube checking but of course if you're checking cathode ray tubes there's another one you know anything with high voltage over a thousand volts which is what uh, most digital multimeters max out at and these things also double as a high voltage dissipator so if you're discharging you know a high voltage capacitance from a CRT or a, any, anything that's holding high voltage when these are grounded you touch the tip and you can slowly dissipate that high voltage charge through the built-in resistance of these things now this specific one, they come in several name brands, uh, not just Pintech. The most popular is B&K Precision. Their model number is PR28A. And I've also seen them on Amazon from a company called Caltest Electronics. Their model number is CT2700, all the same probe. And like I said, I've been looking for several years and this one kept coming up. It gets really good reviews and it's a decent price you know they're all under a hundred dollars and if you know anything about high voltage probes if you've been looking at them for a while you can see right off the bat this one's pretty much copied off of the popular fluke 80k40 same type of design same type of voltage range of course the internals are probably a little bit different and the way all these things work pretty simple in theory you've got your metal probe end at the top and you've got a long insulated shaft this is where the high voltage resistor will be it'll either be one big resistor or maybe several hooked in series it's all fully insulated you've got some creepage discs here at the end uh, just to increase the length so if any electricity came down it would have to go over these discs first and then you've got a big one down protecting your paw and there's probably a uh, grounding ring inside as well but we'll check that out when we open it up and on the other end you've just got your wiring you've got your two leads that plug into your multimeter and these are kind of neat they're four millimeter bananas with a sprung insulation sleeve on them 
haven't really seen those before that's pretty cool so it, really the, the fluke doesn't have it I don't really know why you'd need that I suppose if you had this somehow touching the high voltage source yeah you could get a little bit of a shock the bigger one would be as if you've got your grounding probe lead hooked up to a high voltage potential and you were to touch the black ground end you could get a bit of a zap and then the other wire on here is the grounding lead and anytime you use one of these things you're supposed to have this earth ground so if any voltage did by chance arc past this into the circuit, uh, it won't take out your multimeter, it'll go straight to ground and it'll also uh, prevent you from getting a shock. And just on that caution, you know, this is high voltage stuff. Most everything that I use is all low current and that's what these things are meant for is low current testing. But even at low current, high voltage can hurt and can kill. So have to keep your wits about you when you use these things. Go over the instructions real quick. Now if you have to read instructions when using a high voltage probe, maybe you're not quite ready to use one, but hey, uh, wouldn't hurt checking over the instructions, safety precautions, operation, talks about cleaning, that's another thing. When you're checking high voltage, this has to be absolutely dry. High voltage will arc past the water, even with the creepage discs there. So it has to be dry. Keep it clean and you know, here's all the specifications. You can pause the video if you want to look at that. Uh, most important spec on here is for 10 mega ohm impedance digital multimeters. And we'll go over that. These things basically work as a great big voltage divider. And uh, this would be your R1 in your voltage divider. Your meter is your R2. A little more to it than that, but uh, that's the essential way these things work. And the instructions are in both English and German. Interesting. Now, what else do we get? Oh, we get some different tip ends. Let's get the box out of the way and get the probe out. In case you're wondering the size, these things aren't small. Uh, it's about 14 inches long, going by the cutting mat here. Quite heavy. Uh, I imagine the resistor or resistors that are in here are in uh, some kind of potting compound, either epoxy or silicone, but we'll check that out. At any rate, the tips, they are replaceable, so you've got a couple of tip options. I don't know if that's uh, gold-plated or just brass. It wouldn't have to be gold-plated. Got a little stainless threaded end on that and you've got two other tip types that you can put on this. You got a little threaded hook one. So I guess you could hook this over a high voltage cable if you wanted to. And then the other useful one is this flat kind of spatula or blade and you just screw it on with the nut. And this specifically is for CRT displays. You know, you've got the anode high voltage insulation disc that's usually cupped over the end of the CRT. Sometimes it'll even be siliconed on. And this just allows you to get underneath that rubber cup to get to the conductor inside. So that's kind of neat if you're doing lots of CRT work. Now yeah, we'll open her up here. So nice strain relief. It's zip tied right to the circuit board. There's not much in here. There is a little adjustable trim pot. This is just a calibration pot, I would imagine. It's just a guess. And if we look in the end here, I don't know if we can see. Yeah, there's definitely potting compound. Let's just see if it's, that's yeah, hard, it's not soft. So this would be an epoxied potting compound in there. Oh, and there's our grounding ring. So if we follow the ground trace over, that's it right there. Yeah, it goes right to that grounding ring. So if any voltage was to creep past the creepage discs, it would ground out before it got to your paw. But really well made, heavy duty. It's not cheap feeling at all. It's, it's a good tool. Uh, the wiring itself, got this little Velcroed cable keeper on it. And looks like about a meter of wiring. And we already went over what these do. This is your ground clamp. This is nice, soft, high flex uh, silicone cable. It says it's rated at six kilovolts, 18 gauge. This stuff is not high flex silicone. Seems to be PVC jacketed, but nothing wrong with it. 
Oh, it's made in Taiwan, if that's important to anyone. It's got a serial number. And then just another warning, the ground lead must be connected to earth when you check stuff. Before we get into checking stuff, let's just make sure uh, our meter is going to work with this. Before checking the internal resistance of our meter, just thought we'd go over voltage divider circuit really quick. Most people have seen this. It's just a ratio between R1 and R2. If we had a resistance of 1000 ohms in R1 and a resistance of 1 ohm in R2, that would give us our 1000 to 1 uh, dividing ratio. So if we fed it 1000 volts, we'd get 1 volt out. And in this case, R1 would be the big resistor in the probe. R2 would be the impedance resistance of the meter. And just as a demo, this has got a calculator in it. I just plugged in 1000 volts. We've got our 10 mega ohm meter and our resistance of the probe, giving us the 1000 to 1 ratio and our output voltage of 0.999, so basically one ohm or one volt. Even better is the Fluke 80K40 instruction manual. I'm going to link to this below in the description because this is a pretty good manual, better than the one that comes with these things. And as you can see, it's got the exact same specifications, 40 kV DC, 28 kV AC, uh, input resistance, 1000 mega ohms. It's going over the impedance of the auto ranging in the flukes and a lot of flukes they've actually got an 11.11 .11 mega ohm internal resistance and we're going to check that out and even in different scales it will change and they just say if you've got that you can just multiply your voltage by 0.99. Now I don't measure anything in great enough accuracy that I need to convert it and it just talks about how much load is going to be put on the circuit when you're probing it because again you are there is a ground connection here through that big resistor but it's very little if you're probing 40 kilovolts you know, you're only going to be producing 40 microamps of load. And it's just talking about the operation, theory of operation. And there's probably a better schematic of what the probe is actually like. High voltage resistor in the handle. That's probably that trim pot resistor. And then your 10 mega ohm meter. And then you've also got it going to ground. That's all there is. Now let's check the meter. To check the internal resistance of your multimeter, you're going to need another multimeter. Or you could just look in the manual at the specifications for your specific meter. But I wanted to check this out. So I've just got this meter in the ohm scale, this one in the voltage DC scale, and just running the probes right into the inputs of this meter. And just like the Fluke 80K40 manual said when in auto ranging the internal resistance is right around 11.12 mega ohms so no surprise there and like i said for the type of stuff i'm doing i don't need super high accuracy when measuring high voltage stuff i just want to make sure the components working so it's roughly in the ballpark but if you did need higher accuracy then just like in that fluke manual you would multiply your voltage reading here by 0.99 to compensate for the slightly higher impedance. But I'm going to show you something. If you change the range, so if we go out of auto ranging into manual ranging, we can get this closer to 10 mega ohms. So if we go to two decimal places of resolution, you can see it's dropped down to 10.11 mega ohms now. So that will give you more accurate readings if your meter does the same thing. So try that out. And if we drop it, just as a test here, see if we drop it down to one decimal place, we're almost at 10 mega ohms on the mark. If we go to the 1000 volt range, we're right on 10 mega ohms. So play with your meter if you wanted to, to see if the auto ranging will change that if you go into manual ranging. Now let's start having some fun and testing some stuff. First thing we're gonna check with the high voltage probe is the voltage driver for the plasma tube of this helium neon gas laser. And the reason for that is I know exactly what the specifications on this are. It's supposed to be outputting 1050 volts DC. So we've got the meter hooked up to the high voltage probe through our input leads and the grounding, uh, I've got it to the back of the laser body. And then I've also got the laser body grounded to my uh, ground pin on my power supply. 
So we're safely grounded, we've got everything hooked up right, we've got the meter in DC scale, and we're in auto ranging for our voltage. Now when we, when you use these high voltage probes, only use one hand with the probe, put your other hand in your pocket or something, because you don't want it touching anything that might be conductive, and the off chance that you create a circuit through your own ticker, because that will uh, stop things or melt fillings out. So we're safe, we've got, uh, we're holding this with our one hand, we know we've got our range hooked up, we're grounded out, and we will touch the probe end to the anode of the plasma tube. And we're reading 1057 volts. So I'm certainly happy with that. Let's see if we change it to manual range and lose one decimal place so we get the internal resistance closer to 10 mega ohms if that makes much difference in the reading. 1040 volts. I'm certainly happy with that kind of accuracy. We know it's very close and 10 volts in high voltage sources I'm not going to worry about. So let's test AC voltage now. The next thing we're checking is this uh, insect killer. These can put out quite a wallop. Don't ask how I know. They just use a step up transformer and this one's rated at uh, 4,600 volts output on the killing grid. So it's being fed uh, 120 line voltage, goes through the step up transformer and the step up transformer is feeding each side of the killing grid with uh, what roughly half that. So 2,300 volts one would expect on either side of the killing grid giving us our 4,600 volts. We've got the meter in our AC scale now and of course we've got our grounding clamp hooked up to the insect killer's ground and holding the voltage probe with one hand, the other hand's in my pocket, so no chance of melting out the fillings hopefully. So we will check one side here. Oops. No damage to the probe end. So we're checking the one side and we're at 2,393, 94 volts. So that looks good. And the other side, ooh, only 1,504 volts. So something's wrong here. These should be the same. So that's exactly why I got this thing, so we can fault trace problems like this. So I don't know if there's uh, some voltage leakage or loss through this crimp here. Jeez. Uh, or uh, you can hear it sizzling a bit. There's probably some leakage through some corona discharge. Nope, get to fault trace that. Let's check one more thing. Let's do a little HVAC diagnostic work on this electronic air cleaner. I can't find any specs on this thing to figure out what the output voltage is. I heard it can be pretty high though. Got our grounding clamp on the case of the cleaner, so we're grounded out. Holding our probe with one paw. Got the other paw in the pocket so we don't melt out our brain cells hopefully. And we will touch the output. Ooh, it's sizzling. What do we got here? 7,780 volts. Yeah, that's some serious electron potential there. Rather check it with the probe than my tongue. So that's the Pintech HVP40 high voltage probe. Same probe as BK Precision PR28A. If you're in the market for a rather good value high voltage probe, definitely consider one of these at roughly half to one third the cost of the Fluke 80K40. They represent good value. Strong tool, it was heavy, it was easy to use good connectors and everything. The one little niggle I suppose I had was the grounding alligator clamp boot. Uh, it was getting in the way when I was trying to attach it onto the air cleaner housing there at the end. So I might remove this boot or just put a, a stronger bare alligator clip on. Of course that's application dependent. I'm just so happy that I finally have a high voltage probe. I've been wanting one for so long. So I want to thank Banggood again for sending it, for us to have a look at it and I will have links below in the description. If you're interested in one of these HV probes, hopefully this review and quick demo has helped you understand them better, along with how to confirm your DMM's internal impedance or internal resistance will work with the probe. Very important. So either check it with a multimeter or check your meter specs before you order one of these. Cheers folks, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.